Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to start uh, parametric equations and parametric functions uh, for a, an ellipse. Um, as you see on the tablet, I'm just going to remind you first of what we did um, for a linear um, equation and for parabolas. We gave very simple examples. We gave x as a function of t, the hidden parameter we thought of it as t, time, um, even when we had something like, look at this, remember this one? Um, the moon orbiting, uh, this is the moon, excuse my moon, uh, orbiting the earth in a elliptical trajectory, um, it moves. So when it goes to a P point, if it's here, look at this, if it's, uh, this is the moon, if it's here, P is moving, if P gets to Q, you got the point and it keeps moving and moving around the earth. So even if the trajectory is not uh, a line linear or a parabola, we're gonna, this is what we're gonna get to. If it's ellipt elliptical, if it's an ellipse, we also have a hidden parameter. It could be T or it could be something else that we um, gonna study with the ellipse. So in the, in the ex simple examples of a linear uh, lines, you know, two particles moving in a on a coordinate grid I gave you this example, x as a function of t equal to t minus 5, y as a function of t equal 3 minus t. And then we sketch this one is the 2t minus 5, this one is the 3 minus t, okay? And uh, speaking of that, we said, you know, we said for t equal 1, what's x and y? And for t equal uh, 2, uh, you know, you get your x at minus 1 and your y at plus 1, and we got this point here. And for t equal 3, we got 1, 0. So in this situation, we see as, as you know, t increases, t1, t2, t3, the orientation, the sign and the direction is going in a negative downward, a downward uh, 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 position, or uh, the orientation of the graph of y as a function of t. See that? y equal x of t plus b because we said, you know, we want to write it as y as, you know, as a function of uh, x of t. And then this t, when we differentiate it, we found out that this t is the gradient also. It's the slope, the rise over run. And it's the radiant that, it, that showed us also the change in the sign and the direction. But this same uh, gradient is also in, an, in, in a parabolic curve and in an elliptical curve. And a parabolic curve, remember, we set up certain um, uh, fixed parabolic um, function or rules. We said, you know, y, uh, x is, is going to equal 2at or 2pt, and y is going to equal at squared. a equal, equaling p, that means the length, the focal length between what? The focus and the vertex. So, but we kept it at a because in many, many uh, books, they study in parametric points called pq. So we don't want to confuse it with the p. And we said that the, uh, the x and this is how we write the coordinate of any point at, in a parametric function, in a parametric mode. We write them as 2at for the x or 2a gradient and a t squared or hidden parameter or gradient squared for the y. So if we are sketching this focal chord in a parabola that is that reads x squared equal 4ay or 4py, p and q being the ends of this focal chord, we said the focal coordinate in a parametric mode of p are 2ap and ap squared. For q, they're going to be 2aq plus aq squared. And then we went all the way into finding the equation of this tangent to the focal chord at point p, and we found it as being px, p being the, this p being the gradient, minus ap squared, and the other one where q is being qx, which is q, where q is the uh, gradient uh, at that particular point, minus aq squared. And we said this is as simple as, you know, 
thinking of it, conceptualizing as being this focal cord QP that you see here or PQ, you know, converging as delta X goes to zero from being a chord or a secant into being a tangent at P or vice versa, converging in the other way and being a tangent at Q. And that's how we got this equation. And then, of course, we we eliminated the hidden parameter, which is uh, in this situation, uh, the gradient uh, or in the parabola cases is T. And we were all we were able to get to those equations without the hidden parameter. And that's what we're going to do with the ellipse. We're going to do the same thing with the ellipse. Now, if you go to uh, some textbooks in, for the ellipse, you see that in parametric mode, you don't have four parametric coordinates 2 a t and a t squared. You have something like that. P a cosine theta b sine theta. And they tell you that because in the horizontal um, stretched, the ellipse is stretched by a times theta. And the vertical, if it's going like this, if it's a horizontal stretch, it's squished by b times theta. So if you have something like uh, a, a circle and you squish it, uh, in the vertical direction, you get uh, a vertical squish of b times theta, and that's why the coordinate on the ellipse for x, they're a cosine theta, and for y, they're b sine theta. And you would be like, okay, that makes sense. It goes with what the teacher said in the classroom and what this tutor said. But can you prove it more? Can you make it closer? Of course we will. Why it's that way? We will... Uh, uh, explain that very well. But before we explain that, we're going to go to the board and start with the form that was squished originally, which is the circle. Okay. So if I have a circle, oh, this is wrong here. This is a zero three on top. This is zero three. Okay. So I want to go to the board and I'm going to show you something uh, very, very simple that we're going to start with. And you might think, why? I'm starting with something very simple because the idea in itself is simple, but it's going to get a little bit more uh, not uh, complicated with the tangent. It's going to get more challenging. So if I have a simple circle at the origin, no hk, no shift, and the equation of x squared plus y squared equals r squared equals 9, R equals A equals B. There's no B. There's no squish. Equals 3, of course. In this situation, if you take a point P here, and this P moves to here, and then it moves to here, you know, in the unit circle, always cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So if you have a point P here, and then this point P moves to here, and then to here, to the pi divided by 2 to 90 degrees, the parametric setting is at what? a cosine theta and a sine theta. There is no b. Okay, I'm not squishing anything. Everything is proportional. Even when we did the tangents here, remember? To get that director circle of a circle, we found out that we have perfect squares here. Look at that. And then as we move these perpendicular, as we move the perpendicular tangents, everything, all the coefficients remain proportionals. And the ratios in the Pythagoreans and that went with the equation of the circle, everything was proportional. Because there is no squish, because the original stays R. R is A. And then when even when we go to parametric, X is going to be A times cosine uh, theta. Theta being this, this angle, okay? If I take it counterclockwise now, or a second, think about it this way. I'm going counterclockwise in a unit circle. That means I'm going from pi divided by 6 to pi divided by 4 to 45 to pi divided by 2 to pi. I'm going in this direction. And I say cosine theta. What's cosine theta? If I have a P equals X, the projection on the X axis divided by R, which is A. That's why X equals A times cosine theta. And Y equals A times sine theta. And you tell me, oh, okay. Everything is easy. I already know that. I know you already know that. Now... At theta equals 0 right here, what's x? x equals a times cosine 0, 1, 3, y equals 0. Perfect, that matches. At pi divided by 2, x is 0 and y is 3. So everything matches. Why are you giving me this? 
I'm giving you this to show you that in a counterclockwise position, I was able to parameterize and everything worked out perfectly. Now, can I go clockwise with a circle, not an ellipse? Yes, I can with a circle. Look at this. If I start up here, this point, 0, 3, and I do similar parametric uh, equations or setting, I set x of theta equals 3 sine theta and y of theta um, equaling, if I set it, you know, the way I want, if I choose it like, let's say, x of theta equals 3 sine theta, and y of theta equal uh, 3 cosine theta, because remember, I have only have one a, there's no b, it's 3, okay, I set it up at 3. So, what do I get at 0? At 0, I get at, you know, right here, at 0, I get uh, sine of zero is what is zero. So x equals zero and y equals three. So I get this point, zero, three, right? And then at pi two, if I move 90 degrees in this direction now, clockwise, okay? You all follow with me? Okay. I get sine of pi two, pi divided by two of 90 degrees is one. So x equals three and y equals zero. So x is moving from zero to three. So x is, you know, increasing. So I'm going in a clockwise direction and I'm still sketching and curving and graphing what the same circle so counterclockwise and clockwise when it when you don't have when everything is proportional when the coefficients a equal b equal that radius when you don't have a squish when there you don't have a change when you don't have this anti-pythagorean thing and the slack that you have in the ellipse everything works out perfectly but with the everything works out perfectly even the tangent remember i just told you about it remember we got the tangents here the perpendicular tangent to sketch that director circle as we move them around r equal a everything remained proportional as we moved around however with an ellipse we started with a condition we started with the egg condition with that breakfast condition for any line y equal mx plus c to be tangent to a point on the ellipse c that constant has to be equal has to be radicalized equal to the a squared m squared plus b squared the breakfast of the eggs of the ellipse squared now having said that you might tell me uh okay give me an example of an ellipse and let's roll with that let's see what you mean okay i'll give you this example look at that I have x squared divided by 4 plus y squared divided by 9 equal 1. now if you went with just memorizing things without understanding, you you tell me, okay, you always keep the B here. I tell you, yes, because, you know, this is a vertical stretch. So Y as a function of T or Y as a function of theta equal B sine theta equal 2 sine theta and X equal 3 cosine theta. I tell you, okay, but if you follow that, what are you going to get? Look at that. If you follow that, you get Y equal 2 sine theta, X equal 3 cosine theta and you know, for uh, uh, theta equals zero, you get what? You get you get x equals three. This is theta equals zero. You get x equal three and y equal uh, zero. And for theta equal pi divided by two, you get e e x equal. This is pi divided by two, ninety degrees. X equals zero and y equal two. And in this situation, you get the ellipse this way. This is three. This is two, and it's not vertically stretched. So what happened? What happened is, you know, you, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about any student in general. You went with, ahead with memorizing. Again, we don't, you, if you memorize, especially when you get to that point in studying math, you're even beyond pre-calculus, you're, we're linking everything to calculus, we're uh, deriving, uh, we're doing differentiations, we're uh, linking with switching between polar and parametric. You can't memorize. I'm sorry, you know, you will confuse yourself and yes, I always keep the B here because I want the smaller quantity to be under the X. Why? Because everything under X squared is the crossing that happens uh, in the horizontal direction. And since the crossing that happened in the horizontal direction is less because I have a vertical ellipse this way, that means that's why I kept the B here. But when you go for parametric and you want to choose 
you have to choose what's in the vertical stretch, what's under y squared. So in this situation, your y should equal 3 sine theta because what's under y squared, the vertical stretch is 9. So I don't even go by A and B. You go by what's in the vertical stretch under that y squared, okay? Otherwise, you, will, you are, you know, leaving yourself to a lot of confusion. So basically, you know, all there is to it, y equals the vertical stretch times the sine theta, anything under y squared. And x equals the horizontal stretch, of course, times the cosine theta. So if we go back to our example, what, which example did I give you? x squared divided by 4. This is an ellipse at the center. Look at it. There is no h. There is no k. No h, no k, no vertical, uh, no, no shift at all. Okay? So how is that? in line with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. How is that in line with that idea of counterclockwise? Okay, remember, I want to build it counterclockwise in the unit circle with this cosine squared theta, sine squared theta. Because if I build it, I just showed you, the way I want, it's not going to work. This is only going to work counterclockwise with this, with this idea of going in a unit circle and sketching the 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 ellipse even if it's a vertical ellipse starting here going like this and then i go to the other side and then i come back here so i go this way okay so that means x squared divided by four is corresponds or equivalent to cosine squared theta because that's the vert uh, the horizontal crossing and y squared divided by nine is equivalent or corresponds to sine squared theta okay so if I am to put it like in this, you know, to get rid of the power 2 right here, x to the power 2, so I put everything in a, in a radical, in a square root. And I move the 4 to the other side, so I get my x equal to cosine theta. And I get my, I move my 9 to the other side, and I get, look at that, much better here. And I get my uh, y squared, uh, radical of y squared equals square root of 9 sine squared theta, that means y equals 3 sine theta. Now, if I put theta equals 0, I get x equal 2, y equals 0. If I put uh, a theta equal pi divided by 2, I get x equals 0 and y equals 3. And for theta equal pi, I get a minus 2 and a 0. If I, am, if I go ahead to stretch it in a counterclockwise, I start here with my 0, pi over 2, pi, and I go from z uh, 2, 0, all the way to this one, which is 0, uh, 3, going back to minus 2, 0, and then finishing the ellipse in this way. Okay? So when I draw the ellipse parametrically, I go counterclockwise. Remember that very well. Uh, and I go, you know, with without memorizing. The x is going to equal the horizontal stretch times the cosine theta and the y is going to equal the vertical stretch times the sine theta, okay? Now, you might tell me, uh, still not very convinced, you know, can you show me geometrically? Yes, we, I'm going to show you geometrically, and this one actually doesn't look that great. I'm going to do it on the board for you. Uh, geometrically, we're going to go back to this idea of uh, what's a, um, what's, an auxiliary circle okay and we talked about it since i believe uh, the first lesson of this very very lengthy uh introduction of conic section polar and parametric um so if you have an ellipse and uh, let's make an ellipse an easy one in the horizontal direction and let's make it like this this is vertex, vertex, vertex here, and here. And let's join them. This center is shared by the circle that we call auxiliary circle. So, okay, this is the auxiliary circle of this ellipse. This is, a, this is not for you to conceptualize in a three-dimensional space, no. 
This is a transversal vertical cut like this. So if this is A and this is B for the ellipse, for the circle, it's always A. So if you pick a point here, this is also A, right? I'm imagining this in a, pole, in a coordinate a plane, two-dimensional plane. If I am to draw now, look, I am drawing this perpendicular from any point on that auxiliary circle to the focal diameter of the ellipse. To make that uh, uh, right triangle where I can use my trig functions, and this is the angle theta of eccentricity. This is the angle that is going to show me how much of a squish. What, what is the eccentricity? Am I getting to, uh, uh, is it more than one, uh, less than one? Where am I going with that eccentricity? Okay? And if I call this, I don't know, let's call it Q. We always call it P. And if I call this M and this is C. Now, if I go ahead and do cosine theta equals what? What is Q? Q has x, y. The projection of x, this is x, and this is y, right? We all agree on that very easy. Cosine theta equals cm divided by r, which is a, equal x divided by a. So x equal what? a cosine theta, and that's my x. Parametric x, okay? Parametric x. Now, if I am to take that and plug it where? Exactly, yes, in the equation of the ellipse. What do I get? What's the equation of the ellipse? It's at the center. Instead of x squared, I plug in this one, the parametric one. a squared cosine squared theta divided x squared divided by a squared plus uh, y squared divided by b squared equals 1. Okay, so and I eliminate, what do I get? I keep, I want the y squared divided by b squared equals what? 1 minus cosine squared theta. So my y squared equals b squared. What's 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta. So y equals b sine theta. And not to memorize B being the vertical projection or stretch. Okay? That's about it. And that's how I got a B here, a different. I got this squish. With the circle, it stayed A. Here, I got the B, the vertical projection, which is the squish uh, in the case of the ellipse. Okay? I believe this is, we still, you know, this is very, very... You know, for me, I don't see that. I don't know why some students, you know, they see the parametric mode as being very difficult. As long as you understand it's counterclockwise, it's between zero, uh, the, the theta is between zero and two pi. And, and um, as long as you understand that the angle is the same angle of eccentricity, meaning the one at the center, not the one at the focus, this one here, this angle, Nothing is, I don't, I don't see that as difficult. Actually, it's less, it's not as difficult as the polar. Okay, now, we already did that. Figure that out. You might tell me, uh, give me an example. I'm going to give you an example that we, I think we did this one before, but we're going to do it differently. They always start you with something like that. Uh, 4x2 or x squared plus 9y squared minus 24x minus 36y plus 36 equals 0. They tell you. Find the equation of the auxiliary circle. Exactly, because that's how you, we're gonna, we're gonna see how is that related to parametric. We already saw that, right? Now we're gonna put it with values. We wanna give an example. So just, this is just simple completing the square. So if you take four as a factor, x squared minus six x, because it's minus 24, yes. What do you put here? Why did I put nine? I put nine because I took that b and I made it minus b plus six divided by two, and then I squared it. Minus b divided by a, uh, divided by two, I'm sorry, squared. That's the rule. Minus b divided by two squared. So that's nine, so I put plus nine. And then here, what did I do? I took nine as a factor, y squared minus four y. Why did I put plus four? I put plus 4, I did the same thing. 
Uh, look at it. It's minus 4. B is minus 4. So minus minus 4 is plus 4. Divided by 2 is 2. Squared is 4. Plus 4. Okay. So I put a plus 4 here. So I have... This is y squared minus 4y plus y equal minus 36. I moved the 36 to the other side. But what, what, what did I add? I didn't only add 9. I didn't only add 4. I had some student confused with that the other time. I added 4 times 9. Look at that. 4 times 9. 36. And I added another 9 times 4. So I added 236. So what I need to do, I need to add 236 to the other side. I did here. See, on the other side, I added 36, 36, and the original minus 36. So I'm left with 136. And then what's x squared minus 6x plus 9? That's x minus 3 times x minus 3 to make it in this x minus h form, okay? that You're usually given something in the beginning, something easy like that. Plus 9, again, what's y squared minus 4y plus 4? It's y minus 2 times y minus 2. So now I have my form as x minus h squared divided by a squared plus y minus square mi minus uh, k squared divided by b squared equals 1. It's a horizontal stretch because this quantity is larger than this quantity. Everything looks fine. So what exactly do you want me to do, sir? I'll find the equation of the what? Circle, the, para the auxiliary circle. What is the equation? Look back at the board. What is the equation of the auxiliary circle? If there is a shift, you keep your shift. You keep your x minus h. But at the end, what's the radius? There's no b. It's just a. So, you know, all we're doing is we just going to forget the b. We're going to eliminate the b. That's all we're going to do. We got a b. We have a b. But we're going to eliminate this b. And we're going to write it with the x minus h. So the equation of the auxiliary circle of this particular ellipse is the following. Is x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared, the hk shift, equals a squared, which is 9. That's it. You're done. But now they might ask you, go ahead and parameterize it. Okay? Again, it's not very, that difficult. Uh, x minus 3 squared divided by 9 plus y minus 2 squared divided by 4 equals 1. Parameterize it. That means if I go counterclockwise, this whole term equals what? Cosine exactly squared theta. And this whole thing is going to be sine squared theta. And then if you are to do it this way, you do the radicals to get rid of that to the power 2. So x minus 3 squared equals 9 cosine squared theta. So if I want to get rid of that 9 cosine squared theta, I go ahead and I find out that my x minus 3 equals 3 cosine theta. So x equals 3 cosine theta plus 3. The first parametric uh, coordinate of any point on that ellipse is this. For the uh, y, this is a y, I'm sorry, it looks like a 4. y minus 2 squared divided by 4, that's equivalent to the sine squared theta. So... Basically, y minus 2, you remove the square root, the radical, and y equal 2 sine theta, theta plus 2. Now, at theta, if you want to go ahead and sketch it, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do it actually on the board for you. I have x equal 3 cosine theta plus 3. So, let's do that on the board. Okay, let's first, I have x of theta, x of t, and the, uh, 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 as x equal 3 cosine theta, right? That's what we, uh, yes, 3 cosine theta plus 3, okay? And y as a function of theta, as a function of theta, or as a function of t like we did, equal 2 sine theta plus 2 here, let's see. Theta plus 3. 2 sine theta plus 2. Okay? So those are my parametric coordinates for this special ellipse. If I am to sketch it, they tell you, oh, go ahead and sketch that. What do you do? You put it like this. Theta and then x and then y. 
Remember when we were sketching polar, we did r theta only because we have a polar axis. We don't have an x and a y. Again, this is the theta in the unit circle and the first revolution between 0 and 2 pi. We are not in polar mode here, okay? So, for a 0, what do I get? You plug in 0. What's cosine of 0? 1. 3 plus 3 is 6, okay? And a sine of 0 is 0, so you get 2. So I got my first point. No, now, for uh, pi divided by 2, so or uh, pi divided by 2, 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so pi divided by 2, I get a 3 here, and the sine of 90 degrees is 1, so I get a 4 here, right? Now, I'm going counterclockwise, so I'm going to go to pi, right? So if I go to pi, what do I get? I get... What do I get? Minus 1, so that becomes 3 times minus 1, plus 3, that's a 0. Oh, look at that. I get a 0, and what? This becomes 1, right? Uh, I'm sorry, a 0. So this is 2, because sine of pi, sine of 180 degrees is 0. So I also have a 2 here. 0 plus 2 is 2. Now I keep going counterclockwise for 3 pi divided by 2. For 3 pi divided by 2, what do I get? Uh, I get a 3. Okay. Why? Because cosine of 3 pi div uh, divided by 2 is 0, so I'm only left with 3. And for the sine, y as a function of the theta, I get what? What do I get? Anyone? Okay, so you get a minus 1. So this is times minus 1. So you get 2 times minus 1 plus 2, so that's a 0. So now I have my points. I can go ahead and very confidently sketch it. So look at that. So for 0, pi over 2, and then pi, and then I keep going counterclockwise to 3 pi divided by 2, right? Okay. So for 0, I have 6, 2. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2. So this is my first point. Let me do the, you know, pi divided by 2. 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have uh, this point right here. And then for pi, keep going this way, I have 0, 2. 0, 2. Oh, look at that. So... And then for 3 pi over 2, what do you think it's going to be? It's going to end up here. I'm sorry, this is not sketched very well. So like here, it should be at 3, 0, which is 3, 0. So if this way, if you go ahead and sketch it, it will look like this. Okay? And this, look at that. You know, it's all in that first quadrant. That's a special one. And it's going counterclockwise. And here I have my uh, major vertices, my minor vertices. And can I find out what's, what A is? Now I'm in parametric mode. I did theta, I did my x and my y, and I drew it in parametric mode. But can I switch back to Cartesian or link it to a rectangular, simple rectangular Cartesian words and find out? I believe I drew it here for you. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right here. Yeah. So can I switch back? Or can I link it to rectangular Cartesian? Absolutely. Look the, at the focal diameter. What's the focal diameter? The whole thing between the two major vertices is 2a. Again, we go back to that 2a. The, you know, any point pf plus pf prime, the distance, the string loop of that carpenter is going to equal to 2a. That's what we studied in lesson one of this lengthy introduction. So 2a equals 6, a equals 3. And look at b. I can also figure out b from, it's always when you graph it, you can link it to a and b and rectangular Cartesian, those a and b and c that you uh, uh, started with when we started in a, a, a regular rectangular uh, coordinate grid. So b is 2, okay? So c uh, squared equals what? 
equals a squared minus b squared equals 5. So c equals square root of 5. Now, can I go further and write it in a uh, polar, as a polar form? Yes, you can. You know, first let's find what's the polar form of a, a horizontally stretched ellipse. R equal EK. Again, I don't memorize it. I know that my E here is not 1, so I have to have an E. It's not like the parabola. The parabola has 2P on top. Here I need to have 2P times E, but since E equals 1, we don't mention the E. But here you need to mention that E because it's not equal to 1. And then you need to go and do times K. And again, I still have it on the board, on the small board behind me. This K, the distance between your uh, focus in a, you know, polar setting in a polar mode and the directrix, okay? So you can use it as a e divide, uh, minus the product of a times e, or you can use it a, as a squared minus c squared if you have your a and your c. Like in this situation, we do have our a and our c. So what do we have here? We have e equal, let me go to the board with that because that's actually a little bit interesting. So uh, we have a as 3, b as 2. Let's go to the board. And we still in parametric, we started in parametric mode and now we're just gonna switch to polar. In order to switch to polar, we need first to think about that form that we need to write. You know, if that was a parabola, we start with r equal 2p and then one plus or minus cosine theta, you agree? Yes, because it's in the horizontal stretch. So, because it's, and this you have, I'm sorry, you have an E here, but in the case of parabola and an E here, but in the case of the parabola, the E is what? The E is one, that's why we don't mention it. That's why I'm repeating these things for you, so you don't need to memorize that. Now, in the case of an ellipse, you need to put the E, and you need to bring in that K, that we got from the polar mode, which equals what? A squared minus C squared divided by C. This is the distance between the focus, if the focus is here, and focus at zero, zero, when we are in polar mode, and the directrix. Not the center and the directrix. Center and directrix, I keep repeating, is plus or minus A divided by E. This Fn is your K is a e minus c which is the product of a and e which is b squared divided by c in this particular situation it's a k one plus or minus e because it's not one here cosine theta okay let's find e first a times e equals c so e equals c divided by a right all agree okay what is c we found out that c equals square root of 5. So that's square root of 5 divided by a, which was 3. Now what is k? k is a squared, so 9, minus c squared, so that's 5, divided by c. So that's equals 4 divided by square root of 5. But before we dig into any further, you can also always verify what you're doing. How do you verify what you're doing? Look at your e. e equals square root of 5. If you don't know it, plug it into a regular calculator. You don't even need a scientific calculator here. You know, uh, square root of 5 is around um, 2.23, 2.24 divided by 3. That gives you a quarter, oh, almost 0 0.75, I believe. So that's between 0 and 1. That proves to you that, you know, the approach, whatever you're doing, switching between polar, you know, parametric, going back, to Cartesian to, to, uh, to rectangular to find the center and the A and the B and the directrix as A divided by E. You're doing everything in you know, the right way. Everything matches, okay? So now, if I'm gonna go ahead and write it in polar mode, I have R equal E times K, so that's what? E is square root of five divided by three. K is four divided by square root of five. So I get rid of this and I have one. Is it plus or minus? 
That's the million dollar question. Is it plus or minus? It's unless you are told to deal with this one, with this F, that's going to be minus. But since we, uh, you know, we are sketching in a counterclockwise direction, that means most probably we started with this parabola on this side with this F, that means opening leftward, that means it's a plus. Unless you're told, if it's very general, it's either plus or in one of your uh, answer, if you don't see plus by itself, you could see plus or minus, depending if they're giving you more information. This is something that I just came up with, this whole thing, okay? So depending on what they want you, if you're not told anything, if this is very general, very broad, it's a plus because you're going counterclockwise, you started with this parabola right here on this side, and you kept sketching your ellipse, okay? Now, with that said, um, this gives you actually a very, very lengthy idea on how to, do, to, to deal with all these uh, conic sections in uh, different modes, parametric mode, polar mode, switching back to rectangular and switching between them. And, you know, um, the only thing that we still need to, um, start we still have the time we're gonna start with the tangents to the ellipse using parametric um, functions remember um you know when you at a certain point when you want to find dy divided by dx differentiate find the slope in an ellipse you are basically doing this to a, something that is curvy linear what does that mean that means there is a vector Remember when we just found out right now, we did this, we, we in, in one of our example, we did x equal 3 cosine theta plus 3 and y equal 2 sine theta. So both x and y, they were tangled up and related in their movement because p and q and all the points, they move the same way the moon moves in an uh, elliptical trajectory around the earth. So they move. So this d and y, they, it, the dy divided by dx that we have to take into consideration this hidden parameter theta because look what we just did with the example x equal 3 cosine theta plus 3 and y equal 2 sine theta plus 2 this is as if we're doing a vector we're taking a vector call it r vector v vector in the form of theta with respect to theta okay and this is the x component as we move uh, and this is the y component as we move. So this movement and the rise over run that is gonna, you know, develop from this movement is tangled up, tangled up with this hidden parameter theta. So that's why dy over dx has to take in, into consideration uh, uh, this hidden angle theta. And in order to find that out, what do we do? Look, let's go to the board. Let's erase that now that we're done we can hopefully you guys can switch now conceptualize that you need to switch between parametric polar rectangular you know know your basic rules and that for those of you who are continuous calculus with me you know we will do calculus you know we will uh, take it a step further for those of you who are just studying the ellipse and the parabola and the conic sections we will deal more with only polar and only uh, a rectangular uh, mode or rectangular Cartesian coordinates, okay? Now, what I meant is this differentiation where we get this, this slope or the rise over run or the first derivative has, is, has to take into consideration this angle theta, this hidden parameter, because we just found out that a parametric that moves, that where x and y move, they move in accordance, you know, with respect to this hidden theta. So this hidden theta, as if there is a curvilinear v or r, you know, this r moving, like this, moving, 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 right? Uh, and it has two components. One component in, is in the x component, and one component of this vector is in the vertical y component so instead of dy over dx i have to still take into consideration theta so when you differentiate and you want to take into consideration 
A new element, what do you do? Anyone? Lisa, you're the only one who... What is that? Yes, exactly, chain rule. So, this is d theta, but we cannot put, in order to eliminate, we cannot put dx divided by d theta. We have to put d theta divided by dx. And when we do the calculation, we do dx divided by d theta, and then we get the reciprocal of that, and we flip it. We put it here in this chain rule, and we everything works out perfectly, okay? For those of you who are just starting calculus and don't know calculus very well, you know, this is what we're doing. If we have an ellipse in the form of x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1, dx, the differential of dx with respect to d theta, what is the differential of, of uh, remember, this thing here, you know, is related with the parametric function that has what p as you know the x coordinate is a cosine theta the y coordinate is b or vertical stretch sine theta all agree to that right so what is the differential of dx divided by d theta the of uh, the coordinate a cosine theta minus a sine theta okay the cosine goes, we will study that extensively in, uh, in calculus, in differential calculus, and we will explain why and how we derived that and how we differentiated that, which are totally different. So this is minus a times sine theta. The dy, and with respect to d theta, the dy is b sine theta. The differential of sine is cosine there is no minus so it's b cosine theta okay just go along with these two and then think of that dy times dx we remember we eliminated the theta so we plug in the reciprocal of exactly of a minus a sine theta so dy divided by dx equals b cosine theta times the reciprocals times 1 divided by minus a sine theta. So if I want to put it in this form, it equals minus b divided by a cosine theta divided by sine theta, which is cotangent theta or cot theta. Yeah, you can do you go with that if you want, but this is not what we're aiming for. Now, if I am to uh, now move this whole thing here. Let me put it on the board so you can see it better. Um, what is the equation of the tangent now? Now I have this dy divided by dx. That means my rise over run, my differential, my gradient at that particular point being minus b divided by a cot theta or cosine theta divided by sine theta. All agree, right? We already found that. That's established. Now, the equation of any tangent at a point p is y minus the coordinate of p, parametric p. y minus what's parametric p? The y coordinate of p. p is a cosine theta and b sine theta so minus b sine theta equal the m which is the gradient minus b divided by a sine theta times cosine theta x minus this x parametric x a cosine theta okay i'm sorry you don't see that because i forgot to switch you back with me okay so parametric, P is A cosine theta, B sine theta. The equation of any tangent is Y minus the Y coordinate, B sine theta, equals M, the gradient, which is the differential, which we just found out right now, 
times x minus the coordinate, the parametric coordinate, okay, a cosine theta, okay? So that's my, the equation of the tangent. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get rid of that a sine theta by doing everything times a sine theta. And I believe I did that so we can save time. I did that, did that for you. Yeah, I did it here at the, uh, on the tablet. Look. So I did everything times, see that a sine theta here? So I went ahead and I did times a sine theta to get rid of it. So the first term here becomes y times a sine theta minus ab sine squared theta equals minus b cosine theta times x plus ab cosine squared theta. Very, you know, nothing, you know, no magic here. Okay? So uh, if you move your, look at this, you have a, what are you, what do you have here? Look here minus a b sine squared theta you move it to the other side it becomes exactly plus a b cosine theta exactly so it becomes yeah you move it to the other side so you get rid of it so if you if you do that what what are you left with you're left with this y a sine theta plus bx cosine theta, you move the bx to the other side, equals ab. Didn't get it. Okay, let me write it here for you. Okay, so I have y a sine theta minus ab sine squared theta equals minus b cosine theta times x plus ab cosine squared theta. Now, if I keep the y a sine theta on this side and I move the b with it plus b cosine theta and x and I take this ab to the other side and I do cosine squared theta plus sine. What's cosine squared theta plus sine squared? Exactly one. That's all I did. Okay. Now you got it. Okay. Perfect. Let's go back here. And now I divide by a, b, a times b. So what do I get? I get y sine theta divided by b plus x cosine theta divided by a equals 1. So my um, equation, the equation of the uh, 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 tangent at this point is what? Is x times cosine theta divided by a plus y sine theta divided by b equals 1. But remember, you know, how do you memorize this? You memorize this or you, you don't have time to, you know, to derive it, although it's not a long, de you know, derivation, but you don't have to derive it every time you're asked about it. We're going to do it now with no theta. We're going to eliminate this hidden parameter. We're just going to do it, and Lisa is going to help me, with calculus only. That's why calculus is the solution to most of your, and I said from, since day one, I started teaching you, I said all those formulas that you know about volumes and about, you know, different things, you know, that relating things in physics, they're all based in calculus. Most of them are based in calculus. Anyways, in order to, you remember there is a condition, first of all, to draw a tangent. And the condition, if you need this y equal mx plus c to be a tangent to an ellipse, c, the constant, has to be equal to what? To this radical breakfast. Remember the x shape, the oblong x shape? So you square the breakfast a squared, a m, a squared, m squared plus the squish b squared, and you radicalize everything. In order, first you need to fulfill this condition. Once you fulfill this condition, you can come up with this, you know, equation for a tangent to an ellipse that looks similar to an ellipse equation, but please pay a lot of attention because this is where most students, you know, they, what is that equation? Yeah, let's write it on the board. This equation is in the form of what? What did we get? We got x cosine theta divided by a, okay, plus, we got y sine theta 
divided by b equal 1, right? That's what we got. And you tell me, oh, okay, now I can, I know, I know a way to memorize it. It's like the equation of the ellipse, and you put the uh, coordinate of the uh, uh, parametric mode, the coordinate of the point in a parametric mode on top. And I say, no, no, wait and pay attention. This here on top, yes, in the bottom there is no squaring. That's how I remember it, and that's perfect, okay? But on top, you don't have a cosine theta. You have x times cosine theta. So that's the cosine theta equal x divided by a. So a equal x divided by cosine theta. So what do you have really on top? You have a scrambled form. I remember it by being the scrambled form after my condition, my breakfast condition, c equal plus or minus that radical a squared m squared plus b squared, there is a scrambled form there. This is not your parametric coordinate. This is not a cosine theta. This is x times cosine theta, okay? So, in the bottom, and the, the denominators, yes, they're not squared, okay? I remember that. But I remember that on top, in the numerator, I do have a scramble. This is not the x-coordinate in parametric mode. This is not a times cosine theta. Remember that very well. And this is not the y in parametric mode, okay? Please. Because in the next, um, be it this afternoon or be it tomorrow, we're going to try to uh, get rid, arrive at the same uh, equation, this same equation that is on the board without this parameter theta. But we need to use advanced, it's not really advanced calculus, it's uh, here they call it calculus 2 or implicit differentiation in order to get to that, okay? Um, but... We used this way, we went through parameters because it's a lot easier for students. Because all, the only thing you need to know is this. The only thing you need to know that, where did we do that? Here. The only thing you needed to know is this one. That, you know, the differential, the derivative, the first derivative of a co cosine angle, cosine theta, is minus sine theta and of a sine theta is cosine theta that's all you needed to know in order to keep moving you only needed basic calculus to get that to that equation to that scramble back equation that i called here okay but now in the next lesson we're gonna we're not gonna use that theta we're just gonna use calculus we're gonna use chain rule and we're going to use implicit differentiation and you know for those of you who are going to continue in calculus with me it's more fun because you know we don't need to go through that hidden parameter to get to the equation of the of the tangent to an ellipse okay we still need to fulfill the restriction the condition c equal plus or minus the radical a squared m squared plus b squared okay uh just keep that this equation in mind remember it's scramble um it's not a cosine theta on top, it's x times cosine theta, okay? And we are going to arrive at the same equation, find out the same equation without theta in the next lesson. I'm hoping it will be the final lesson because after that, I'm going to give you a few real-life examples and then we're going to wrap up this um, very lengthy introduction. And we will, uh, for those of you who are continuing only with uh, polar and, and conic section with me, we will focus on that. And for Thesa, for the calculus, we will keep, you know, uh, going with our um, integration now. We're done with differentiation. Okay, I'll see you in the next and hopefully final uh, video of this lengthy introduction. Thank you.